So let's look at this. I see that you picked the right a null and alternative hypotheses and what we need to remember is that what we want to see is yellow. Okay, so yellow I'm thinking you must have done the test statistic by hand if you're not sure how to get the p-value. Let's look at stat crunch first. Okay, so I'm going to go stat, proportion statistics, one sample with summary. Successes, that's the word I wanted. So yellow is our success. So we have 130 successes but the observations are the number of green and yellow which come out to be 568 and um, we want to make our null hypothesis equal to 0.26 and our alternative was not equal to so let's do compute so here we go and right here you can see we've got the z-statistic that you had and we have the p-value uh, that they had there. So that's how you do it with stat crunch. Let's review that. I'm going to do stat proportion statistics one sample with summary. Now I'm going to show you this. If you go up into the help you can do a student study card and that tells you exactly how to do all these things. And it gives you the keystroke. So this will really help you as you go into that next test. Now let's get rid of stat crunch and let's look and see how we're going to do this. So what I'm going to do, okay, so now Sammy what I've got is I've got my tables and I will send these to you but this tells you how you do your hypothesis test. So you've identified the claim, you've put it in symbolic form, you've ident identified the null and alternative hypothesis. So let's look at this and it gives you a really nice outline and um, this is in the back of your book and or at the end of the book and I will also send a copy so you can print it out. So here are the important formulas how we do the Z statistic and you calculated that correctly but what I'm doing is I'm looking at the Z scores and our Z score was a negative 1.69 now if we look here at a negative 1.6 and we go over to 1.69 1.69 we get this p-value of 0 0.0455 so right here now this is a two-tailed test because our alternative hypothesis was not equal to so what this tells us is 0 0.0455 is the area here in the lower tail but when it's a two-tailed test we double that so 0 0.0455 is the same as that 0 0.908 and that's how we get the p-value but let's just continue on this and it says we're using a 0 0.01 significance level now when the p-value is less than when the p is low the null must go when the p-value is less than our alpha level significance level then we can reject our null hypothesis but 0 0.09 is not less than 0 0.01 so we're going to look at these fail to reject choices so the fail to reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is less than or equal to the significance level that's not true but fail to reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is greater than the significance level that is true so that is how you do a problem like that and so we got it right now what's the final conclusion now the final conclusion because we rejected we failed to reject the null hypothesis that we cannot there's not sufficient evidence to warrant 
the rejection of the claim that 26% of the offspring peas will be yellow? I'm thinking that's going to be the right answer because our claim wasn't less than and we don't have sufficient evidence. So I'm thinking D is going to be the best answer again. Oh yay, I always like it when I get it right. So what I'd like you to do, Sammy, is go back and try this one and do this one and then try another one like it and see if you can get there from here. But the p-value, uh, you had 3.38. Remember, the p-value is a probability. So the probability is always between 0 and 1. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take, because it's a two-tailed test, because our null hypothesis was not equal to, we take the number we find on the table and we double it. Or, like I showed you, you're going to look at uh, the stat crunch and that automatically does that for you. Good luck. Let me know if you have another question.